Um, okay. So after a long hiatus, we are um, uh, back at the virtual table for another um, session of our wilderness adventure. Well, currently it's in the wilderness in a, in a uh, cold, cold cave of um, once occupied by dwarves, apparently, the Nurgan people. And after, um, I think according to my notes, we are now on day, it is day eight of the, um, since you guys left Penascalto. Uh, you've explored a fair amount. I mean, you don't know how much really, but you, you seem to have um, followed up on a couple of loose ends as far as um, tunnels and avenues of exploration go. The big recent discovery was of this enormous crater in the middle of a massive cavern um, uh, lit by a shaft of sunlight in the cab in the cavern ceiling kind of a like it's you can't really even estimate how high up it is but it's like the the, the ceiling of this cavern is is um very very um, far away um and as the hours of the day have crept by this shaft of sunlight has slowly moved uh and now it's kind of slanting in at an angle um surrounding this okay so what recently happened is you went back and explored a series of tunnels can i do you remember that trap room where you found the crushed remains of um the uh the companion of um brass and uh um what's her name ozana um so you went back and explored some um natural tunnels underneath that room and uh ended up back in the crater cavern um, and that's where we last left off as you guys had reemerged into the crater cavern. And um, so if, if you recall the crater, which was, how far across is the crater? It's about, I mean, at least 400 yards across. So if you picture four football fields and then that's about the diameter of this, of this crater, um, which you have not actually gone right up to the edge of yet. You, you, have an estimate of its size because you were looking at it from the original approach, which was up a kind of um, slope. You were able to look down at it at an angle and get a sense of how big it was. So now you're coming out from a different direction because you've re-entered the cavern through a tunnel. And um, surrounding the crater is a walkway, a stone walkway of um, clearly of Nurgen construction. Um, uh, and equally spaced around that walkway, around the crater, are um, seven, um, they look like uh, stone shrines. They're kind of like waist-high um, works of stone. And then periodically spaced around that walkway are these pairs of um, pillars. Um, so if you just picture standing on the walkway, there's a pillar on either side, and those pillars are about um, eight or nine feet tall. Um, uh, with not not supporting anything, just freestanding pillars, kind of periodically spaced around the um, around the walkway. And the last thing, or the um, the last thing you saw before we um, stopped that session was one of those little weird black pill bug creatures that um, Tio had smashed, and the blood of which had, um, you know, like um, was like either acidic or you know it actually like was harmful but luckily not too harmful for our halfling friend. Um, one of those is kind of uh, on the edge of the, you know, there's like a lip to the crater and there's one of those just kind of like um, sitting on the edge. You assume it's moving like the other ones, but from this distance and because they move so slowly, it just looks like it's, it's still. Uh, so it's cold in here. Um, it's a little drafty. And uh, I mean, everybody, so far you guys have not run out of food and there's fresh water in the, um, that, do you remember that one little shrine cave where there was a the little statue? So there's fresh water accessible there. I think you guys have enough rations to, who's tracking rations? Has everybody got their own little batch or somebody tracking the master rations? My last memory was that we had eight. I had it written down on a piece of paper, but I don't know. <laughs> like eight. There had been a success. You mean eight total for the whole gang? Yeah. Okay, great. Let's just go with that. And um, yeah, because you'd had that successful um, hunting expedition. Um, 
And so we're going to try out these new conditions, uh, which will kick in whenever you go too long without eating or drinking. Um, and instead of hot or cold, uh, which was one of the conditions, I think I'm just going to try out the, the tag miserable, which has broad application um, and could apply if you were too hot or too cold, et cetera, or maybe um, too emotionally distraught. Um, so right now, nobody's suffering from any of those. You guys have done a pretty good job of keeping everyone kind of uh, afloat as far as the necessities of life. I don't think, I mean, somebody may not have gotten a good night's sleep last time around, but um, we're just going to start from, start fresh. So there you are. I have a question or just yeah. another part of the recap was, didn't we just come out of a, like a side room? that had a bunch of these bugs all covered with some sort of white, uh, I don't know if it was a powder or a mold or something. Yeah, um, you had investigated, there was a side chamber, there was like a low crawl space leading into a side chamber um, filled with rubble and um, the dried husks of a bunch of those pill bug creatures were kind of scattered about the, the chamber and um they're covering most of the things in that room was a glowing like a bioluminescent lichen um and i think if i recall tio did some kind of test move like poked it or threw something and there was like a puff of of a uh, powdery substance like spores or something which nobody exposed themselves to but you saw that happen and then very quickly when you guys made the decision to retreat from that room yeah, and I think uh, Theo used the hatchet that I gave him, and then I took the hatchet and stuck it in the torch to like burn whatever was on it. Didn't didn't you save some of it? I got some. Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. So you have a sample of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, is there uh, or was there is there a way that we can tell or does it have any similarity to the white rot? Like um, would it be instantly recognizable? Nobody, you guys don't have a clear idea of how the white rot is transmissible or how, or what, like the only thing you guys have ever experienced is seen it um, on somebody, seen it affecting their body, but you have no idea what the kind of, um, the means of, of getting that disease is. Like if it's, like how people get it, you don't know. And what this chamber has in it is just this lichen that grows. So when people get the white rot, it's not like a lichen growing on them. It's like their flesh kind of starts to um, uh, kind of turn pale and then break down and kind of decompose. Okay, just checking. <laughs> Yeah, so there's that room that you explored. I'm trying to think if there's any other points of interest that you you haven't fully explored the perimeter of the big cavern yet. Um, there's the side chamber. Um, you know, back at the mouth of the cave is where your base camp is, and um, Ozana and um, Evaristo and Braz have been kind of um, stationed there and a bunch of those um, strange uh, cattle are, are still kind of like grazing on the hillside outside wondering when their master is going to return <laughs> or masters I think there was some uh, competition between or maybe not competition but Amu and Safira had both kind of won over some of them right And Amu had talked about um, perhaps leading a, a a bunch of these animals back to um, Claudio's sister's place. Yeah, I think she would be very happy if she had some of these cows to take home uh, to have in her uh, to replace the cow that died. But. Uh, before we get back, we need to make sure to uh, 
uh, be very careful. No more poking bugs, okay? Do do uh, does Tio still feel compelled to destroy these things, or did that go away when I'm? Um, you had the general sense that destroying these things is the destruction of these things would um, please um, Caracol. Okay. In any, at any, at any juncture, you're not, mm -hmm. um, before it was like a definite, like you sort of had to, right. He was kind of, the Caracol was kind of asking you to the sort of not really demanding, but like in order to make things right in that moment, you had to, um, mm -hmm. but in general, you have the understanding that these are aberrations and that, um, the more of them you destroy, the happier Caracol will be. Okay. I'll, uh, point to my scarred face and say I'm not messing with those things anymore keeping my distance okay so you don't want to approach you're not interested in approaching the crater or just uh, not too close <laughs> to the creature you don't, want to, you don't want to approach the creature sorry yeah he's, a liar. he's just he knows what he's doing <laughs> <laughs> Um, are, are, so are we up on that pathway or are we still? You are now at, um, you're at ground level. So you're on the same level as the crater. Okay. And you emerge from this. Here, let me try this out. I'm just going to show you. I made a quick sketch on the whiteboard. You guys see that? Is that showing up? So, and I'm going to put a little star where you've emerged. You've basically emerged where, the, where that star is. And the, the concentric circles there, the inner circle is the crater, and the outer circle is roughly where the walkway is. And then back to the left is the, the platforms that you came up from the far left down at the bottom there is where you entered the giant cavern originally. And in fact, that's the place where Ozana and Bross ambushed you. And then when you guys came back and explored, you came up the walkway to these two platforms on the top of the rise. From there, you look down at the, at the crater. And now you've emerged from this um, tunnel that you went exploring in a different part of the cavern. So the the walkway is the outer circle, you said. Yeah. And the inner, and then in in the middle of it is a crater that rises up. The the lip of the crater is maybe a maybe a couple maybe a yard or two high, and um, then it descends. Um, okay down on the far side of that yeah from here it just looks like a little um from where you're standing now it just looks like a horizontal line with the bug on top of it but because you were up higher before looking down on it you know that um it it gets quite deep on the other side of this lip uh, but we can't see into the crater not from where you are right now okay i think we should go walk up to the circular path and look in Okay, everybody's yeah. About that. And um, this point, there's enough light coming through the hole in the ceiling where you don't need your um, torches. I don't know if you want to keep them lit or not. Um, I think I think Amu's got a torch. I I do, but it's not mine. Uh, <laughs> somebody must have given it to me. I remember that. Zana had a, some torches, and I think a bunch of people had torches. I had three torches, and I may have given you that one. Okay. But I, I don't know. I didn't mark it if I did, but I think I might have given it to you. Okay. Um, so let's just say torches are extinguished for now, unless there's a reason to keep it on, and then since you, you do have enough light to see by. Okay, and you all approach uh, the walkway. Um, yeah, so, and you approach uh, near one of these, um, these things that look like these waist high 
blocky um, pieces of stonework <clears throat> that are slightly angled um, uh, in, outward from the, um, from the crater side so that they look like little lecterns almost, I guess. Um, that's what led you to sort of presume that they were, some, they were shrines of some kind. And uh, the one that you approach um, is covered with um, uh, stone. It's covered with imagery, but most of it's been worn down to the point where you can't really um, make it out. And uh, except for one kind of abstracted, um, looks like a star, a seven pointed star. That's the one thing you can make out. And one of the reasons you can't really make out more than that is that the entire shrine or altar is um, covered in that same kind of tiny patterned um, writing that the creatures um, leave in their wake. Um, which I think is a good point to remind you that this entire cavern is covered with this stuff. Like as you get closer and the sunlight illuminates the ground at your feet, um, which look, you know, just looks like a kind of generalized modeled cavern floor, you know, if you, if you bend down and look at it, you see that it's covered in this, um, this minute scrawl that the, the weird pill bug creature, creatures kind of leave behind them. And that um, altar is covered with the same stuff. Do we just see one of the bugs? <clears throat> um, yes, right now there's just the one bug on the, um, on the lip of the crater. Okay. On the inside? The crater kind of, um, let me gesture. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, the crater comes up like this, and then there's like a little, it kind of, there's like a little lip that kind of comes up and then down to the ground floor of the cavern and then straight out. From here, looking in, it's because of the curve of the thing um, and the huge size of it, um, it's hard to gauge, because that curved surface is so uniform, there's no angles, it's kind of hard to gauge how deep it is. Um, you're standing, you know, when you're on this walkway, you're probably 10 feet away from the actual lip, but you're high enough where you can actually look down into the crater. Um, but it's really deep. It's not a shallow crater. Uh, I want to go over and, and peek over the edge, see if I can get a better look. Okay. Um, so Amu steps down off the walk and walks over <clears throat> and sort of, um, do, you, do you step up onto the lip itself or just try to like peer over it? Um, I'll do it slightly cautiously, kind of crawl up to the edge and just kind of peek over, make sure nothing's about to eat my face and then, <laughs> uh, and then stand up if I, if it looks clear. Yeah, okay, so it doesn't look like there's anything, any immediate threat. So then you sort of climb up um, onto the lip and uh, look down. So if this thing is, let's say, 400 yards across, you, you, it may be, in your estimation, it might be 200 yards deep. So about as deep as half its diameter. And the sunlight is glaring off the bottom of the deepest part of the crater. The sunlight is kind of um, uh, glaring brightly off of it as if it were, um, it just looks super hard and shiny, like as if it were glass. Just the kind of deepest part and then that effect kind of tapers off, you know, halfway up the edges of the crater until it turns more into kind of, um, sort of a natural stone um, closer to the lip where you are. And you see one of the little black creatures sort of down in the crater, um, maybe a quarter of the way up on the far side, a, a quarter of the way up away from the bottom opposite you, just kind of, again, very, very still, but you presume that it's just moving super slowly. Hmm. 
I see another bug. This is a deep crater. Are there any crystals inside? See any it's a shiny crystals glass. The shiny glass at the bottom. Do I see anything that resembles a crystal? There's nothing that kind of breaks the smooth surface, <clears throat> except for that bug. Yeah, there's nothing that looks like a crystal. So is the bug like crafting the smooth surface into into their like carvings? Um, you'd have to go down there to figure that out. Um, standing on the lip, looking down at at her feet, almost sees that that the writing does extend past the lip and into the crater, but be, the surface of the crater itself does kind of change and appear to get harder and shinier as it gets down to the bottom. And at this distance, you can't really tell if the writing continues. Um, does the surface of the crater, at least until it gets shiny, look climbable? Or is it way too steep? It's not super steep. Um, um, it, well, no, no, actually near the lip, it is actually it is quite steep. Um, I'm gonna say it's about, you know, it's about like this and it's not, it's got some, um, it's kind of semi-porous, so you might not be able to get some grip on it, but um, you would, I think you probably have to drop and slide until the, um, the slope kind of gets a little softer, and then you might be able to stop your descent. But if the, you know, if it's too hard and glassy by the time you stop, then you'll probably slide all the way to the very bottom. Ooh without precautions of some kind. So you're saying it's like a giant slide? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it, it could be pretty easy to um, drop yourself over that edge and then just um, slide down to the, to the bottom. Did we leave the rope attached to the cows or anything? Or do we have a rope? <laughs> <laughs> Don't remember doing that. I think you guys used the rope to lead them at some point, um, but we don't, yeah, we don't, let's just say that it's not attached and that you have your rope with you. I believe it's in a couple of pieces, though. Yeah, we have 35 feet of good rope. Oh, good. So you have it written down. Great. <laughs> well, if we have the rope, that is how much. Yes, you have, let's just say you have the rope. There's been enough sort of, you know, hanging out at base camp to say that you would have brought the rope with you. Uh, if anybody feels like <laughs> taking a chance. Although we do have our super sweet climbing skills, maybe we can stick to the. Yeah, uh, I totally <laughs> forgot about that. If I'm an expert climber, so. Crater, I, I don't know. I'm gonna um, take my uh, my bastarat pelt that I've been wearing. Yeah. And lay it down like a sled and slide down this thing. You're just going to go for it? I'm going to go for it. Is anybody going to try to, is everybody, is everybody going to let Theo do that? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I kind of put my hand on his shoulder. Uh, is it dark at the bottom? Can we see the bottom? Uh, right now, the sunlight is illuminating. It's like hitting the side of the crater and that reflected light is completely illuminating the interior of the crater. So it's not dark down there at all. Well, what's down there? Can we see anything besides just like uh, the bottom of a cone? It's like this shiny, it's more like a bowl than a cone and uh, um, super shiny. And there's just that one, yeah. um, one giant bug. There's just one. Oh, it's giant? Well, I mean, same size as the one you saw before. Okay, okay. For a, for yeah. a pill bug. <laughs> <laughs> um, Several. Yeah, there, there's just the one bug. I'm not that afraid of it. How are you going to get back up again? I'm an I'm an expert climber. I'm I've I've been blessed by Caracol. I can climb you up can this. Climb. No problem. You can climb the glass. But aren't you worried about disturbing the bug and getting hurt again? Not really. No, I I think 
the bug just walks slowly. As long as I don't stab it like last time, it should be fine. As I'm saying okay. this, I'm I'm inching forward. <laughs> you're like, it's cool, it's cool, and you're just moving towards yeah. it. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes. And if nobody's gonna physically stop you, you're just gonna I'm I'm going for it, yeah. It's gonna be a little county fair action. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My Put the blanket down the big um, Okay. One of those burlap sack. Yeah, exactly. Down the slide, yeah. So is anybody gonna physically stop to you? I will let him. <laughs> You'll let him go. It sounds like it sounds like Sophie's having trouble hearing us. Oh no. No 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 oh. no no no. I'm good. I'm okay. Good. Um, okay. Yeah, Donna, are you are you gonna give him a push? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I will let him go. <laughs> Have at it, kid. No, I just don't stand in the way. <laughs> just let him go. Okay, so Tio steps up to the lip um, and hops onto his um, faster at pelt. Um, do you let out a little whoop, or are you just? <laughs> um, I'll I'll uh, I'll um, do like a little swirl prayer with my hands. Yes. Uh, and then, yeah. And then hop on. Here I go. Okay. Woo. Huh. I don't think you have to roll any dice. I think that's a pretty easy move for you. Uh, so you drop down the steepest part um, and hit the um, when it, the slope starts to start to um, have a, a, a more of an angle to it. And um, at first, it's like you hit and you almost feel like you're gonna. The, the rock is so porous that it almost catches the pelt, and you almost feel like you're gonna fly off of it. And then you hold on to it tightly and sort of scrape across the hard part. And then you hit the smoother part and then you just pick up speed and just go. And you just, if you just picture descending into this giant bowl from one edge, you're a skateboarder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds awesome. <laughs> um, uh, and it just gets more and more speed and slicker and slicker until you're like flying along at a, um, uh, a really good clip. Um, and you, uh, I wouldn't aim for the bug. Just okay, so you're just going to make sure yeah. not to run into the bug. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, you zoom all the way down, um, all the way, and everybody looking over the lip sees you get smaller and smaller as you zoom down, and um, the curve uh, goes flat, and you basically reach the very, very bottom of the crater and, um, you know, go up uh, the other side. I mean... You got a good, you got some good speed. I think you go about halfway up the other side of the crater and then um, turn and, um, you know, come back down. Awesome. And then you gradually, um, you know, after probably one, two, the third or fourth swoop, you kind of end up at the very bottom. Um, am I noticing anything about... Once you drop uh -huh. below the ground level, it, it's almost like you lose track of, because it's this curved surface, you, you, it's very disorienting. Mm -hmm. um, you definitely lose track of your friends because you can't really see their faces anymore. And um, you're in this hemisphere of basically light and color. Um, and it's kind of thrilling, but also um, it's almost like you're, and when you look up, you just see this perfect circle of the edge of the crater and it's black above that besides the, the hole in the roof. So it's almost like you've stepped into like a three-dimensional globe. It's like a really kind of strange experience. I mean, I would say given the fact that you just offered a prayer and that you are a person who is somewhat religious, you know, it is, it is almost like a, um, not transcendent, but kind of like a striking experience. Mm -hmm striking sensory um, experience. Um, uh, and, you know, beyond that, there's like a gradation of color as you get all the way, you know, as you get down, it's like um, grayish um, black up near the top. And then it kind of goes through like a black and a purple and a blue. And by the time you get to the bottom, it's like a kind of periwinkle blue, like a light blue. Um, and then you settle. I mean, if you picture like a, a ceramic bowl that's been fired with a really cool glaze, 
Mm -hmm. kind of what it is like. Um, and when you settle down at the bottom and you um, stand up and, and look around, it feels like you're kind of the center of the universe because you're right at that lowest point. And um, it's just color and sunlight going all the way up. And then you look down at the, the glass-like surface that you're standing on and you see that even on that, the writing has been scrawled. Mm -hmm. In fact, it seems like there's a kind of concentric quality to it as if it was started at the at this point the lowest point of the crater and almost kind of like um spirals out from there hmm. and that seems blasphemous to caracol are you gonna, are you asking caracol for caracol for guidance I think in this circumstance, yeah. Um, if I'm if I'm feeling that this is a special uh, special place, and it's definitely a natural, or you know, who knows how you'd find natural in this context, but right. whatever happened here to the landscape is something you've never encountered before. And it's very striking. Um, so do you want to actually invoke to ask for guidance or do you want to kind of like try to, I guess another way you could do it would be like to try to like, um, get you could try to like um i guess you could also do it as a sort of perceive role where you try to like um understand caracol's intent or caracol's reaction mm -hmm. to this thing that way i guess i'm a little confused because i know these bugs are not cool but they're they're making like a giant spiral and that is yeah. uh seems like a good thing. Right. Um yeah, I could totally understand your confusion. Yeah, I'll I'll uh what is that, invoke? Um yeah. I'll I'll sit down in the middle of this giant spiral. Okay. And see what what that what it, what it's all about. Um, and you're, and what's the specific thing that you so just, you're, what's what it's all about. That's what you want to know. What, what's this all about? Help me. Um, out there, Carl. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's, it's 2d6. 2d6. Um, and the hubris here is, I mean, this is a pretty fair question. Looking for guidance from your God. Um, I would say it's, Hmm, is it not not quite trivial? It's gonna be hubris one. Okay. Um, so that will be minus one to your roll. Um, you have your holy symbol with you, right? Oh yeah, it's always with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Through tattoos. Yeah. So you get plus one for that, those cancel out. Um, this is not a place sacred to your faith. Um, and you could spend favor if you um wanted to to improve your role. But right now Okay, I'll do one favor. One favor, okay. Yeah. I'll mark that off. Um, 2d6 plus one. Oh god. I rolled two ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Mark XP. What what would I oh just straight XP. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um up at the top there, I'm gonna say Let's see who's got the highest. Oh my God, Claudio's wisdom at six. <laughs> okay, well, you've got the highest wisdom, my friend. Interesting. You're the most perceptive of this lot. Okay, up at the top, Safira. And what do you, Safira? What are you thinking as um as your diminutive fellow uh, cleric slides down into this giant bowl? Um, 
I think, you know, I've gained some respect for his, his uh, wily ways. It's kind of like, I'm like, yeah, man, connect with Caracol how you want. Like, I'm kind of like curious, but I'm not like jumping on board. Okay, great. Um, so you're looking down, sort of um, appreciating that through that um, perspective, and then you notice a movement over to your right. And when you turn and look, you see that the one pill bug that was on the lip that you guys had seen earlier, it sort of like scrunches up. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of moving along, well, not, not perceptibly moving, but it's sort of, you know, ex extended with all of its little legs on the ground. And then it starts to curl up into a ball. <laughs> what do you do? How far is it from us? Do you want us to be close or far? Close. Uh, get lucky. So just two d six plus luck. Plus your luck modifier, yeah. That's four. Solid four. <laughs> Um, it's about, it's about mm, 20 yards away from you. Sorry, not 20 yards, 20 feet, 20 feet away from you. Okay. And when it, when it, uh, hurt him before, that was pretty, you, you, it was pretty, uh, harmful, wasn't it? He smashed it and it's blood. Yeah. Flew, flew at him, and it, um, I mean, I thought I was I actually thought I was going to kill him because he had he had more hit points than I thought, and I thought that he was potentially wow. dead, um, but it was damaging. What condition are you in right now, Dio? Uh, I have six hit points. Okay, which is down from what's your max? Nine. Okay, so yeah, I think I think I used one of my. Uh, healing kit uses to fix myself at some point. Yeah. I think it bandaged him up too, right? Yeah, yeah so there's some, somehow I heal, healed up from two, I think. Yeah, you were down pretty low. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the blood of this thing was, it, it itself did not attack him, but its blood was um, damaging. Right. So it's, so it's curling up like on the, like right at the lip? Yes, it, it was. It was kind of. In, it was on the lip, and 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 you notice it moving, and you look over towards it, and it starts to curl up into a ball. Okay, I guess I'm gonna run over with my club and, and try to give it a bat. Okay. Um, in the other direction, like not. Right, you're trying to whack it away from the crater. Yes. Okay, great. Um, I think to get there before it does what it needs to do, what it's going to do. You have to roll dex. Make a dex saving throw to get there in time. Okay. All right. How, uh, how dexterous is our friend, um, Safira? I rolled a nine. Oh. And, um, I'll spend a lot. Oh, great. Hey, all right. I have a I have zero dex modifier, so I'm like fine. Okay. Um. You know, I'm going to say that roll acts for both getting there in time and hitting it because I feel like that, that was kind of the overall goal was to get there in time and knock it away. And it's a good size and um, you're not... Um, oh, yeah, I'm trying to get it right when it rolls up so that it will roll away. Yes, got it. Um, yeah, so you run over and you give it a good uh, whack and it, um, you knock it right off the lip and it kind of bounces away across the floor. Uh, away from the crater, just rolls and rolls and rolls, basically into the darkness. It rolls out of the range of the sunlight, um, it rolls away. Um, and Teo, at the bottom of the crater, you're totally oblivious to that because it's so far away, you didn't hear anything. Um, but you uh, notice the one that's in there is starting to do the same thing. And if, 
is it is it like I I just hear nothing from Caracol? Is that there's no answer? Uh, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, I'm gonna say there's that moment. You know that moment in like a war movie where a artillery shells goes off and there's the ring, <laughs> ringing in your ear. Yeah. You ask the question and it's like, I mean, for one thing, the acoustics are crazy in this bowl. But there's a moment where you feel like your your hearing just stops. It's like you're you're almost like momentarily deafened, but it's just like a fleeting moment. And but that tells you that what it tells you is that Caracol can't actually reach you here at all. Right. Like we're out of his or there, you're out of their um, reach. Um, and this thing is rolling up. Yes. Um, hmm. I am going, uh, Amu, did you take your axe back or do I still have that? You have it. I have it. Okay. I handed it back to you. Okay. Um, you can throw it. I can throw it. <laughs> and then I'll have nothing. <laughs> um, I'm going to, I'm going to have the ax ready. Okay. Oh man. How far um, down is it? How far down is this a bug? bug. Uh, the bug is, um, it was about a quarter of the way up from the bottom. So that means it's roughly uh, 50 yards away from Tio. So picture half of a football field looking, you're standing at the bottom of the bowl, you're looking up the slope of the bowl and you see the thing start to curl up into a ball about 50 yards away. Is it on our side or on the far side? Or? Opposite side. Opposite side. I'm in the I'm in the exact middle of this crater. Yes. Wherever this pattern starts, I'm going to um, try and before this thing gets to me, I'm going to try and scrape away part of the writing on the ground. Okay, with the axe. With the axe, yeah. Try and like, if this is a if this is a sentence going around, I want to like try and erase the first word of the sentence. In hopes of uh, just seeing what happens. Yeah. Okay. So you um, and do you, are you feeling urgent at all, or are you feeling kind yes. of yes? <laughs> <laughs> if this thing's rolling up, yeah. So you uh, crouch down and you start to um, scrape away. Yeah. Um, it curls up and it completes curling up into a ball and starts to um, roll towards you. And you've cleared out, um, you know, a couple of strenuous scrapes of the um, hatchet blade across this glass like the um, the writing that there kind of comes off like um, like sand almost you know it's like a it's like a really kind of fine kind of uh, crystal though I mean it's like if you can just imagine it's sort of etched away but etched away so much that what's left is this kind of filigree that you can that you can kind of abrade off so you manage to scrape away you know a couple of axe strokes and the thing is rolling towards you mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how far away is it from me? Now it is uh, 40 yards away, but it's picking up speed. Okay. Uh, you basically, I think you, yeah, go ahead. Tell me what you're the, Okay. Just, this is going to seem unrelated for a minute, but um, <laughs> that room that we were in with the, the lichen. Yes. Uh, were the, were there, was it like molted? Am I remembering it right? The question, like, there, were, there were the husks. The husks? They were, they were okay. just husks, yeah. Um, so it was like they were molting, it wasn't like they were dead in there? Either they were dead and completely kind of extricated from their shells, uh -huh. or they were molted. Okay. Um, dang. Uh, and so I'm, I'm, this thing is in between, or is it, it's, it's on the opposite side of right. me and my friends. Yeah. Um, but I am 200 yards away from. <laughs> and they're at the slippery glassy slope and your special drawing, your special climbing ability only works when you go very slow. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Um, I am just going to be, uh, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, wrap my rat bastard rat pelt around my head again. Around your head, okay. Um, <laughs> and and just be ready with the axe for when this thing gets here. Okay. And by putting it around your head, is that like a is that like battle stance? <laughs> or like protection from the okay, okay. The, oh, I see, I see. <laughs> the acid or whatever. So you, it's just like a um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you like quickly bind it around, so you just got yeah, like yeah, yeah. a desert nomad look going on. Um, yeah. And then here it comes, this uh, bowling ball. <laughs> um, it's rolling right at you. And I, I guess as I would do this, I would back up a little bit, so it would have to come up. Towards you. Okay, got it. Uh, it, it wouldn't like, you know, it, it wouldn't, as far as I can get, I guess, back up the, the other way. Okay, okay. So it's not like full speed. So I would say you sort of, you, you sort of turn and run, you know, a good, a good um, 10 yards before you or turn back because you mm-hmm. get it. Estimated. I want to be ready. Yeah. Yeah. So you run 10 yards up the, um, the incline. Um, and turn and the thing comes to the bottom and uh, rolls up to you. It, you can tell it loses a little bit of velocity, but not much. And now it's, yeah, so now it's coming right at you. And as it comes into range, what are you going to do? Um, I'm going to swing at it with the blunt end of the oh. axe. <laughs> um, with the it, is it Is it like... Uh, just it's still rolled up. Yes, it's not like like unrolling, like gonna bite me kind of thing. Doesn't look it's, like it. Looks like it's just, yeah, it's just still a ball. Um, if it's still a ball, maybe I just try to dodge out of the way. Okay, and let it keep. Uh, and let it keep going up. Yeah. So a sidestep kind of thing. Like, yeah. Wait till it gets. Wait till it looks like its momentum is gonna carry it, and then jump to one side. Mm-hmm. Um. And your dexterity. What's your dexterity? 13. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to roll for that. Oh. Um, yeah, so you sidestep, and it rolls up. Everybody at this point is looking over the lip from above, looking down. It rolls past you, and then um, maybe another 10 or 15 yards past you, and then it reaches the end of its roll, and then it starts to roll back down. But you're standing to one side of its original mm-hmm. trajectory. So as you're watching, it just um, rolls back basically directly back the way that it came down past you a little bit okay. on the far side. And then it um, comes to rest at the bottom of the thing. Oh no. Okay. Still a ball. Still, still a ball at, at the very middle. Yeah. So now it's at the very um, lowest point of the bowl where you have been standing and it's a ball. Um. <laughs> This is weird. <laughs> um, I guess I'm gonna oh, just wait a second and see what it does. Okay. Yeah. Um. So it um cracks open, and you yeah. see tiny little cilia-like feet kind of wheeling around. It's on its side, so it cracks open sideways, and then it kind of like opens. So it's moving much faster than you've ever seen it move, obviously, because it was moving so slowly before. But but by much faster, I mean it sort of gra- very slowly opens. Um, and see, so you tell you see all of its like weird little, um, and each of its feet like is a little. Um, it, it sort of comes out, and then there's a little sharp thing kind of sticking off the end of every foot right and these must be what it uses to engrave the ground Mm -hmm. so those are all like wiggling around inside of it and it kind of like does a little squirm as it tries to figure out which way is up and then it um rolls over um on its back for a moment so it's completely belly up and all of its little feet are kind of wiggling around and then it gives another writhe and rolls over until it's um, upright and then it kind of like orients itself and then um, turns, it just starts turning um, in circles. It like rotates once or twice 
and then it kind of um, aligns itself with you mm -hmm. um, and starts to crawl in your direction, but not very fast. Huh. Okay. Uh, I wonder if this is like a spider web kind of thing where it can tell. Um, I guess I'll, I'll kind of like, like uh, start walking backwards up towards. Okay the rest but i'm i'm going to kind of like zigzag it and see if it mm. if, if it can like tell right which way you're moving yeah um as you do that um Sephira, you glance over towards the place where you kicked away the other one and you see it sort of crawling back into the dim light up there at at a you know at a rate like like that. All right. Um, I'm just gonna sort of like stamp my ground, my my mat. Okay. And Claudio and Amo, you guys see this too. You obviously didn't know what Sophia was doing when she ran over there to whack it, but now um, you you see now you understand what, what was happening because this thing is crawling back. Okay, so you're at the ready with your. <laughs> Slugger. Okay. So it's sort of slowly creeping towards back towards the crater. And um, Tio, as you back up the slope and um, you're watching it carefully and you kind of slide to one side and then zigzag to the other side, there's a moment where it pauses and it kind of like goes back and forth like this. And then you stop to see what happens and it kind of orients itself towards you and then starts, um, oh, is that Loki? Hey, Loki. <laughs> And then it um, um, starts to crawl towards you. And then when you zag the other way, there's, it pauses and it kind of reorients itself. So it is appears to be tracking you, but it's quite slow in its movements. Um, um, now, I, I get the feet. Does it have like any sort of face or... or? Uh, no, it's completely like it's it's got like a chitinous segmented shell that's black, mm -hmm. kind of a dull black. Um, the only is that, and then the underside um, just is the all those little feet. There doesn't appear to be any kind of sensory organs or anything like that. Okay. Um. Hmm. This is so weird. Uh, so it does it feel like it it's trying to protect protect this place or so you're trying to get you're trying to pick up a vibe on what its, what its motivation is yeah yeah. I think you can. I think you can roll to perceive that. You're a spiritual fellow. You're a, you're a person of nature. This thing is pretty strange, though. Yeah. Yeah. So that's um, wisdom. Okay. Uh, that's a four. <laughs> I just really appreciate how honest you are about your rolls. I rolled a one and a two. <laughs> so mark wisdom. Yep. you something crunches underfoot and you slip and fall and start sliding down towards it okay <laughs> um i would like to uh like like I mean, I guess if I'm towards the bottom, though, I wouldn't be like sliding that fast, right? Yeah, you're not. You're, it's not high speed. That's right. Yeah, but it is like glass, so you are sliding. Right. Um, and this thing's moving slow. Yeah. So I think like maybe a few feet before it, I'd like to try and jump up and maybe like jump 
over it you know like <laughs> like if it's here like yeah. kind of spring like jump spring over yeah, yeah 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 i think you have to roll a bit because the ground is so slippery sure yeah okay um, next yep yeah. that's better that's a nine okay uh, you do it, but there's a catch. What do you have on you? What's what are you carrying right now? Um, I have my damaged chainmail shirt. Which are you? Which you're wearing? I'm wearing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have the tinder box with the lichen in it. I, I. Uh, I guess would I have my backpack and bed? I probably wouldn't have my bedroll. You probably left that at base camp. Yeah. 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 But maybe the um, I have those spikes from um, that that weird plant. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And are those and all in some kind of bag? I had them in my backpack. Yeah. In your backpack. So you got your backpack, but your bedroll's back at camp. Mm hmm. And then I guess the crystal, we, I was, we were carrying all those crystals too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so you got your, but every backpack was kind of stuffed with crystals. So those are with you. Right. So maybe I wouldn't have the spikes and the crystals. They would be in the backpack. So I would just have the tinder box and my thigh bone and axe. Okay. The hatchet. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that makes sense because you, you guys have a place where you're camped out and you're making these little forays, so it makes sense that you wouldn't bring. Wouldn't, yeah. And Evaristo is back there, so at least he's somebody you you can trust who's near all the your crystal stash. Um, so you hop over it um, and then slip. You, you manage to actually get over it, and then you um, slip and land um, on your back, and your elbow kind of hits it and uh, rolls it over, and then you slide down to the bottom of the bowl, and then it spins on its back and slides down to the bottom of the bowl. So that, and it basically like bumps into you. So you're sitting on your butt, and it's like right next to you with its little feet kind of up in the air doing that, and you're like, just, you know, you're like looking, looking, looking right down at it, at its exposed mm -hmm. underbelly. Safira, the um, the other one has climbed up onto the lip. Uh, I'm gonna wait for it to, to roll up again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tio. Um, how big is this thing compared to me? When it's a ball, it's uh, about a foot in diameter. Okay. When rolled, it's about a foot and a half to two feet. So I can pick, I can pick it up. And if it doesn't weigh too much. <laughs> <laughs> and for the um, moves, you assume that it weighs like a giant pill bug, which would not be super heavy. So yeah, you could probably pick it up. Um, okay, looking. Oh man. Um, is there like a a Looking at it, is there a way where I can kind of grab it and, you, you know, like you would grab a, a crab or something so it doesn't mm -hmm. get you? you? Your best guess would be to just get your hands underneath its shell quickly. Mm -hmm. If you can get, you know, you don't want it to flip over right? right. In the hammock because you don't want those feet on you. Yeah. So you probably want to scoop your hands underneath its shell. Going for it. Okay. Um, before you do that, Safira, it's starting to curl up into a ball. And I guess if you're waiting until it curls up into a ball, it begins the process. And then, thump, it's a ball. Take right, a second. Give it a little. So it's moving a little faster now. I think all you're rolling now is you're definitely going to hit it. It's just a question of where, like what, in what direction. You know, you want to hit it away from the crater. So it's a question of how far. So you're going to be rolling decks for that. All right. Four. <laughs> yeah, four. Okay. 
Uh, so uh, mark dexterity. Um, so you do hit it, but it kind of like, it's kind of a, um, uh, it sort of spins on the, um, on the lip. You sort of whack it and it spins down the lip a little bit and then rolls off on the, on the outer side. So not down into the crater. Um, um, but it's just kind of sitting right at the edge of the lip and it starts to unfold uh, itself again. I try to whack it again before it, I'm well, just so like, like, it's like when you're at the end of mini golf and you're like cutting and it goes right <laughs> past the thing and then you're like, oh no, no, here, no. And you just <laughs> <laughs> uh, some mini golf adjustments. Um, uh, yeah, so to get there, to line it up and to make it again is another dexterity roll. a five. <laughs> okay, so you um, whack it. It um, rolls over and then unfolds. So it's feet down on the ground and then it starts to like squirm towards the edge of the crater again. Back down on the bottom. T.O. Um, you were going to try to scoop it? Mm-hmm. What's the, what's the end goal of the maneuver? Um, just to, to, like, it's weird to say keep it away from me, but if it, if it, it keeps, like, coming after me, I want to make sure that it's not gonna stick me with its feet or... Okay, so you're gonna reach underneath yeah. it. Yeah. And then pick it up? Yeah, I'm, I'm imagining up. like holding it, you know, like, like away. away. From yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Or maybe um, even if I can, rolling it up into a ball myself and like having it. Roll. Yeah, okay. So you're going to test, you're going to try to pick it up, sort of test whether it's flexible and then if mm -hmm. possible, roll it up into a ball. If yeah. not, just hold its feet away from you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So make an exterior roll. Okay. Uh, it's a eight. Okay. So you pick it up. Um, you go to um, you 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 apply a little pressure, and it's not giving. Mm -hmm. And then you go to turn it away from you, and your bottom hand slips, and the bottom half of it um, turns back, and its feet grab onto your wrist. Those little, the little kind of pointy things at the end of the legs. So you know, maybe like a dozen of them have kind of latched onto your uh, wrist there. So you're still, and so you're trying to like manage it. It hasn't done any damage to you, but it's got some traction on your wrist. Um, so for it, it crawls back up onto the lip. It and it appears to be ready to go over the lip without turning into a ball. I can't see what's going on with Tio at all. Right? <laughs> You're kind of focused on your task right now. <laughs> True. Uh, <laughs> my friends over here, they're just watching me. They're just watching me mini golf with this. <laughs> Is that what's going on? Uh, Claudio and Amu, are you guys watching the mini golf? <laughs> uh, do you want to lend a hand? Well, I've been looking back and forth. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I was like with the one eye looking. <laughs> yeah, I'm concerned with what's going on with Tio. Um, I think I want to jump into the into the crater. Okay. Um, he's down at the bottom now, or yes, he's at the bottom. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna um slide over the edge, and if if I can't slide down on my uh, shoes, then I'll sit on my buckler and just kind of sled down. Okay. Great. Uh, so Amu goes over the edge. Claudio, are you doing anything? Donna. Oh, uh, so is our rope not long enough so that we can't tie it around Amu first before he jumps in? 
Um, you could, but it's only about 35 feet of rope. And the, um, the crater itself is like, you know, the distance, it's 200 yards deep. So oh, 200. The distance from okay. the lip to the bottom of the bowl is like, yeah. It's like several hundred feet at least. Yeah, we might have a problem, but I don't want Tio to be eaten. <laughs> well, I guess this is goodbye, Amu. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and Safira is uh, uh, wrestling or <laughs> playing putt putt with uh, uh, the giant pill bug up here at the top. Uh, we could experiment with killing it, but but it might it might explode with um, dangerous black fluid. Right. Is it was it an explosive like ballistic type fluid or did it like leak? Out. It, when it when um, Tio smashed it, it kind of burst, mm. almost like a, a you know if you smashed something that was like a, a a membrane that was full of fluid, you smashed it, it would sort of pop and stuff would go everywhere. I think I think I stabbed it. Oh, you stabbed it. Okay, sorry. In between its plates and oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah, and it kind of squirted out. Yeah. You do we have any ranged weapons? I uh, I have a knife and I have a spear that I could potentially throw. I could throw both of those weapons. Um. Well. <laughs> Step like away. <laughs> okay. Here we go. <laughs> Claudio tells you to step away. I step away. Amu goes over the edge. Claudio uh, pitches his spear. Go for it. Well, my okay. thought is that if we can figure out how to sa successfully and safely kill this pill bug, then maybe send our friends. It gives them hope that they can <laughs> take care of theirs. Okay. You don't want them to be demoralized at this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so throw shoot, you're, you're throwing your spear, so that's a dex roll. And you're safely out of the way, right, Sephira? Oh. I don't know. Do I have to roll decks for that? Um, not you, the you, don't, you don't have to roll, but I think, let me picture what's going on here. Claudio, you could, the thing's about to go over the edge. Um, Sephira is close to it because Sephira was just whacking at it with a club. So I think one of the dangers here is that you're throwing towards, when, towards an ally. That just is, that should, that's a danger you should be aware of. But I would never throw while she's too close. <laughs> I think if you have to hit it, we don't want this thing to go sliding down, sputtering out its horrible juices. Then we're just sending them an awful gift. Well, okay. I do think that the way that Sophia was acting, Sophie, tell me if I'm wrong. It sounded like you were looking back at Claudio for assistance. Yes, sure. Right? Okay. So I think you see Claudio prepare, and then you can just duck and get out of the way. We don't have to worry about you getting hit. Okay, uh, and like run fast enough to avoid splatter. I want to do a speed backwards somersault though. <laughs> well, uh, Go for it. I think, oh, so are you rolling? Am I rolling? Yes, you're rolling. And I'm rolling. Uh-oh. <laughs> and the bug is rolling. <laughs> so, shoot. No, um, so I have a four plus one, so that's five. And then, <laughs> so if I spent luck. It wouldn't clear seven. Yeah, the luck would not help you. And point. I can only do that one, okay. Yeah, you can only spend so I... luck at a time. Um, okay, so mark your dexterity. Okay. You'll get better at throwing this spear. Um, so the shot goes past the pill bug and into the crater. The pill bug uh, tips over the um, edge of the lip, and uh, Safira lunges back up to look over and sees it um, drop for like the five feet before the slope starts, and then it hits the slope, turns into a ball. Um, so basically, at this point, it's kind of racing with Amu to get to the bottom of the. And Amu's got a lot more mass, so Amu is. Um, I think before you went over, you had to decide whether you were going to go with the buckler or on your. Um, on your butt. 
Amu. I'll do the buckler. Okay. What you got there? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. The perfect device for. Yeah. Oh, yeah it's, it's like a little. Wow. It's just like a little. That's awesome. A little sled. Yeah. Great. And it's actually on your arm. So are you like no. sticking your arm under your? <laughs> no, I was going to take it off and sit on it. Okay. Great. So you drop down. Um, so you're, you're moving faster than it. Uh, meanwhile, at the bottom of the crater, Tio. Um, priority number one is getting my arm free. Yeah. So. It's not the the little things have not like dug into you. It's like they've just kind of grabbed your skin. Mm -hmm. They haven't like pierced the flesh. At this moment. Um. And if I drop it, the whole thing would like be on my arm, right? If you let go of the top, I mean, the weight of it might pull the pull it all off. Mm -hmm. um, or if those things, maybe dropping it would it would maybe it would instinctively grab you tighter. You're not really sure. Given given how tight of a grip it has on you right now, if you if you let go of it, it seems like it would fall off you completely. I'm gonna do that. Yeah. So you sort of let go and I'm like like jump away. Let go and and try and yank my arm away as I'm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No problem. You uh, you jump back. Um, the thing uh, uh, hits the ground and um, curls up into a ball. Um, and you quickly glance down at your at your wrist and um, you see the beginnings of one of of these strings of language um, kind of. Uh, scrawled into the um into your wrist just below the palm of your hand like a strange like labyrinthine little fragment mm -hmm. right there um and then you hear that <laughs> scraping sound of a dwarven buckler <laughs> <laughs> and you look up and um amu is barreling right towards you at high speed <laughs> um I'm going to get out of the way and just yell, kill it. Okay. So stepping to one side is no problem. Amo, you've got both hands holding on to the buckler as you slide down towards the... Yeah. When I get near, but not right on top of it, I want to kind of hop off and, and slow myself down. Um, still holding on to the buckler or abandoning the buckler? Yeah, holding on to it. So hop off and kind of like roll to slow yourself down or like go on, like go on your knees? I'm, or... I'm going to try to like uh, put my feet out and my, my free hand. Okay. Kind of like grab the ground and... So a lot of ground contact in order to create some friction. Yeah. Okay. It's not going to be pretty, but... <laughs> Um, yeah, so you throw yourself up and kind of like uh, uh, drag yourself to a stop right next to um, T.O. Um, I'm going to say actually you go past him a little bit because the ground's so slippery. Um, but you do manage to stop yourself. And um, when you turn around and, and look, it's uh, T.O., um, the balled up thing, um, you know, a couple feet away from Tio, and then rolling down the slope past Tio, you see the other one coming. Um, can I, I want to uh, get my spear out and tap it with the butt of my spear. Just try to like, the one that's rolled up, try to um, just roll it a little farther away. I, are we at the very, very bottom? Yeah. So anything, anything that rolls is going to end up right next to us. <laughs> yes. No matter what. <laughs> I mean, pretty much. Um, I would say, Teal, let's back up. Like, let's just start walking, like, up the slope a little bit. Okay. And Get away. Teal, I assume you abide by that request. Yeah. Let let this other one roll past. I think. Yeah. Okay, um, so you guys um, back up away from the bottom and away out of the trajectory of the second one as it comes down. Um, 
and it, um, let's see, Jan, will you roll a d6, just, just, a, just a d6 for me? Five. Okay, it rolls past its partner, um, and then does the same thing, it rolls partly up the far side, on its way back, it kind of bumps the other one and it kind of spins around and that eventually it, both of them are um, sort of sitting uh, at the bottom. You guys are standing next to each other looking at them. Claudio and Sophia are peering down from over the lip above. And they both at the same time um, uh, crack open and start to like squirm around and find their footing. Remember what happened to your knife? I do. <laughs> I do. So, I don't want to lose my spear. I want, let's keep keep backing away from these things. Climbing away. Okay. So, um, back towards your friends, I assume, towards that side. Um. Yeah. You get about 20 yards away, they both find their footing and they start to um, move in your direction. Uh, you get about halfway up the bowl and um, they're continuing in their, at their sort of um, very measured pace to uh, pursue you. <laughs> uh, and then you get to a point in the slope where it gets um, steep enough where um, it's pretty much impossible to get a, a handhold or a, or a foothold. It's slippery and steep enough where without some kind of, um, you know, you just, without the proper tool or a foothold, which doesn't exist, it's, it, you can't really make any more upward progress. Of course, Tio could, um, at a slow rate, given the, the kind of blessing of Caracol, but, um, so that's where you're at. And there's very slowly inching their way in your direction. We're about halfway up, did you say? Yeah. Mm. So picture a sort of a curved football field <laughs> extending up away from you at like a 45 degree angle and then curving up to almost vertical angle right, right towards the lip. Yeah. Can we see them at this point? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're about the same distance away from you. Um, they're 100 yards down there. Are those critters catching up with us? I mean, you've stopped moving, so very, very slowly <laughs> they're catching up to you. Yeah. I mean, they're, you know, it'll take them a while to get to you, so you have plenty of time to think. <laughs> Mm -hmm. hmm. What, what, what are those, go ahead. those super short spikes of yours? Yeah, what about your climbing skills, dog? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not worried about getting out of here, but I'm worried about leaving Amu behind after she came to rescue me. Um, I think I might have left the the spikes back at the base camp. Yeah, we already established that. Yeah. So, um, well, we've got plenty of time, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, They'll probably be at you in about five minutes. Could could we like use you know like a like the axe? Like as a as a climbing, you know, like a like an ice climber kind of thing. You could certainly try. Okay, I won't like go full full right. force in yeah. case of like breaking the okay. axe, okay. but like you know, kind of test it. Test the okay. So give it just um. Yeah. Hmm. Why don't you roll the axe? The it's a hatchet, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, I hatch it. Yeah. Roll the damage on that. That's um, a D4. D4. 
Uh, I'm missing my d4. <laughs> you can roll a d8 and divide roll by d- two. Okay. Uh, two. Okay. It um, without applying, without a ser- so you you give it a what you think is a measured whack, and you chip a little bit out of the glass-like surface. Uh, at this point, it's less like glass, but you chip a little bit out of the surface. Um, but enough to know that you're really going to have to give it a good whack to get any traction. But uh, like you chip enough away to know that you think that this hatchet blade could actually cut into that rock. Is what I chipped away enough to get like a, a handhold? No. No. Okay. Um, so basically what's, what's just to be really clear about what's at stake. It looks like this hatchet will be able to carve some kind of, give you some kind of traction. Um, but you're going to have to really put your arm into it. And then mm-hmm. the kind of integrity of the, the hatchet is a little bit at risk. Right. It's a dwarven hatchet. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually super important. So maybe I would say the thing that's really at risk here would be the sharpness of the hatchet. Uh-huh. Like it probably is not going to break like the way your hammer broke right. when you swung it, but maybe that it'll get dull pretty dull that's not a big deal right no big deal unless yeah we'll see unless we have to fight these bugs right (laughs) (laughs) it's still a good club (laughs) yeah um it's your it's your hatchet um so that's all we've got all right okay well okay who would be better at this task? Let's see here. Well, it is a dwarven hatchet, and Amu has um, a higher strength than you. So it really, so, this really is about, and Amu is a warrior, a fighter also. So um, yeah, this is definitely Amu's kind of area of expertise. All right, I'll start. I'll, I'll hold your spear if these things get too close. Okay. Yeah. Um, blunt end knock him back down yeah yeah, yeah. yep okay so Tia is facing towards the creatures and Amu is going to start to try to like now are you trying to like cut handholds and footholds and then climb up into them and then cut the next set etc or are you trying to like use the hatchet like a climbing axe where you grab on and then Tia would basically be having to be holding on to you as you climbed up the uh, or some other thing you might be envisioning I don't think that would work because we don't have any any toe spikes. So as soon as we let go, right, right, we would right. slide back down again. So I think I'm just going to try to make a series of handholds that we can reach. Okay. So it's a quickly try to make one. I'm going to try to make one handhold. <laughs> See how that goes. Well, I think you can do it. Um, oh, okay. We're not going to do it like one handhold at a time. It's a question okay. of how quickly you can do it before they get to you and how much yeah. damage the ax is going to suffer in the process of doing that. So I'm going to say in order to do this quickly and, and in a measured way and with the right amount of pressure, um, <laughs> gosh, I almost want to say wisdom, <laughs> right? To really gauge it, but strength is really required here for this. So it's going to be a strength roll. Um, okay. And it's going to be, there's going to be two stages. The first stage is this kind of sloped section. And if you succeed at that, you'll get to the next juncture before those things reach you. And then the next, after that, it's more of a vertical um, stretch. Can we get then, help with the, the rope whenever that is? About halfway up that vertical, you'd be able to reach okay. the rope if it was dangled down. Yeah. Okay. And it, it get, does it get rougher when it becomes vertical? It becomes yeah, it becomes a little easier, to, a little easier to cut. cut okay. It. So All this right, is so I'll make a roll. Yeah, and this is to, for that first leg of this uh, climb. Okay. Um. All right. Now here we go. What's your what's your favorite weapon? Is it the hatchet? My favorite weapon is here. It okay. was the hatchet, but I changed my mind. <laughs> okay. Carry on. Yeah. Carry on. Here we go. 
I rolled a 10 plus 1, 11. All right. Nice. Um, okay, so whack. Just, you know, uh, each, each of these things, you, it's like, first you get the hang of it. It's like whack, whack. You cut out a divot. And then you cut a like a, a horizontal horizontal one to make a like almost like a triangle, and then you um, you get two of those going, and then you kind of haul yourself up in there and um, hang on to the um, the slope, and then bam, bam, you do it again, and very gradually, at about the same rate as the creatures are approaching you, you manage to um, do it. And Tio is right behind you, but once Tio, once you start climbing, it's hard to you know, you can look over your shoulder back at the things, but you can't really like aim the spear at them, right? You can just track how close they are to you. So you uh, cross that expanse of about, um, it's about a 20 or 30 yard expanse um, where you're hacking out these, um, these handholds and the ax is holding up. Um, your forefathers would be proud. Your foremothers would be proud of how this, uh, this ax is holding up. Um, and then you get to that point where it's um, sort of straight up and uh, Safira and Claudio are peering over the, you see their faces peering down at you from above. And the things are kind of crawling up, you know, they crawl across one of your handholds up behind you. Um, uh, they're about, they're about 10, 15 yards behind you. Um, right. Did Claudio's spear go into the crater? Yes. Crap. Or did it? No, it did. Oh, and actually, right. I should have mentioned that before. So you guys could have grabbed that. It would definitely have would have grabbed it. It would have been down there with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I totally forgot about that. But yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. You totally would have grabbed it. So you got okay. about like two spears. Two spears. <laughs> I think to climb, <laughs> you've got those both. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Your back back there. Okay, so Amu, this is the next stretch. And Safira, Claudia, are you guys dangling the rope there to tease your friends? Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, Amu. Can I roll it? Yeah. Oh, I rolled a three plus one, a four. We're doing great. <clears throat> uh, so mark strength. Okay. Uh, you get about halfway up and um, you- That's enough to get to the rope, right? Well, you're, the rope is still out of reach. <laughs> <laughs> Failed roll, you can't, you can't <laughs> totally succeed on it. Um, you hack the ax in the, um, the rock and um, you go to cut the second divot and a big shard of the side of the thing falls out and tumbles over your shoulder um, and past you and like, uh, strikes the the wall of the crater and breaks into pieces and kind of scatters past the creatures um, uh, and you manage to actually get a get a handle on that um, but it's not a very good it's like more of a crack than a thing you can actually grip well um, and you go to um, hit the other side and um, the you lose your grip on the axe your hands been become kind of numb from hacking all of these um, footholds. Uh, so you hit it and there's a, um, you, you lose your grip on the, the hatchet and um, it falls past you. And Tio, you're aware that the ax is falling past you. It's gonna slide back down into the crater. Grab it for sure. Okay, um, make a dex. <laughs> Nothing, what do you got? Uh, another four. You guys are gonna get better at your ability scores anyway. Um, Mark Dex. <clears throat> uh, quick question. Yeah. When it when it fills up, you is that when it? it? Yep. Okay. You erase them all, and your Dex increases by one point. Sweet. What What did you just go up to? Fourteen. Wow. Okay. Um, the hatchet 
you know, you're like holding on both your hands on your feet, looking back at the pictures, you look back and you see that, and you don't even, you don't even have a moment to reach your hand out. It just um, kind of uh, spins past you um, and slides uh, down towards the bottom of the crater. And I'm gonna go get it. You're gonna, are you gonna jump? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay. And slide slide back down. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you jump like to the side of the climb. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> is there any hesitation there or do you just do it? No, because these things are slow, right? So yep, yep. Um, okay. and and I I'm a good enough climber that I can make it back to this point, no problem. So yeah, yeah I'm 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 going to get it. Okay. So um <laughs> uh Tio um, jumps to one side, hits the surface of the crater, slides back down. Amu, you look over your um, shoulder. Um, uh, with, you, know, you don't have any feeling in your hand because it's been, it's been numbed from doing this so much. And uh, it's really the vibrations of hitting the stone that's done it. And um, there's a moment where the creatures pause as Tio is sliding back towards the crater. And then they both sort of curl up into balls and um, roll away. <laughs> so, Tio, you get there first. Okay. You're used to this at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, um, let's see, the, here's, here's how I think I would do this. Um, it's going to take a little bit longer to get back, but I think this would be the safest way uh, is I would run up the other side of the crater. Yeah. The opposite side. Yeah. And then wait for them or, or maybe not fully opposite, but the other side, wait yeah. for them to un uncurl. Yeah. Okay. And then I kind of go along the, the ridge of where it gets it. difficult. The perimeter. So it takes them longer got it okay so you slide down to the bottom you grab the hatchet you run up the other side to the point where you can't climb anymore and then you start to mm -hmm. circle back around is that yes. right okay yeah great um so as long as they wouldn't just roll back up and yeah go, you know I, I want them to like start chasing me again yeah so as are you gonna so you're gonna you're gonna go the other side and then just wait until they locate you and then start moving towards yeah, you yeah okay yeah and then you start to circle. Yes. Um, and as you start to circle, um, you know, you see that them doing that hesitation thing where they keep trying to kind of orient themselves and then they, they sort of, you know, start to do this very slowly arcing kind of after you, um, but you very easily outpace them. Mm -hmm. um, and um, in a matter of just a couple of minutes, because you don't want to move too fast, you might slip and fall, you get back to the, um, to the climbing track and now they're, very far away from you and you have the hatchet and i think All right uh, without time pressure i think it's going to be pretty easy for amu to hack the rest of the footholds okay. and they have super screwed up their spiral now right <laughs> <laughs> i can't remember where they are <laughs> um and then you guys are able to get up high enough to grab that rope and Sophia and Claudio hold it steady and um, you climb up over the lip. Maybe a little sweaty. So, so that was fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> Cover anything the, the bottom? Um, I guess I would relay that Caracol, uh, um, th this, this place is outside the do domain of Caracol. And we should leave. I'm down for that. Yeah. Let's exchange are weapons. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Here are your spears. Um, Thank are these you. are these bugs still coming? Um, when you look back over, um, they are in fact very slowly starting to continuing to creep in your direction. Okay. Are there any other uh, 
around the crater that we can see? Mm, not that you can see, no. I mean, the crater right now at this point, it's not like a, a lot of time's gone by, but the sunlight has shifted. It's getting um, towards late afternoon. So the, the shape of the light coming in, it's like a narrower um, shaft. And so much of the cavern is kind of pitch black outside of the ambient light from that. So who knows what lurks in the in the darkness there, but you don't see any other bugs besides those two. Do the does the um seven sided star have any significance uh to me as a dwarf? Um uh why don't you roll to uh know something to see if he can recall that's intelligence that is intelligence yeah i rolled a nine okay So on nine for know something, um, I can tell you something useful about this thing. If in fact you could potentially know, and it is in fact a dwarven symbol. You recall which of your um, family members taught you about the constellations? Oh, uh, my mother. Um, so your mother, um, would point out to you, uh, when you were a child, the seven stars of Tatia, um, the Saitsiman Tatia Valoa, uh, and those, um, if you recall, uh, Tatia is the mother of stars. Yeah. Um, and her, um, her symbol is, um, and the constellation is seven stars arranged in a circle. So that constellation in the night sky, which isn't like the star, the stars are not all the same brightness, you know, like it's not like the Big Dipper where they all have a similar brightness. You can actually have to, some of them are quite faint and it's kind of hard to pick them out. But when you look at these seven stars, they form a, um, almost a perfect circle in the night sky. Mm -hmm. And this uh, seven pointed star is the symbol used to represent um, Either one or all of them. Hmm. Um, but you don't know, you know, what you know about. You don't know any of the specifics about the significance of that. You just know that it represents um, one of the seven stars of Tatia. Yeah. Oh. So there are seven altars. Yeah. And then one for each star. And this crater. Hmm. Something didn't it why do I think it came from the sky like a um, you guys had theorized that um, you, because you looked at some wall carvings near the temple that yeah. showed um, like a shooting star and a, um, a kind of uh, pictograph, pictogram of the mountain with like a, a jagged hole in it. So you I had wonder. previously theorized that something had struck the mountain. I wonder if these bugs came from the sky. Do you think that's where they... Did we... Why would the dwarves make a shrine around it if that happened? Did we determine before that these bugs weren't from this this planet, this world? Uh, that's the first time that idea has been mentioned, I think. Oh, okay. But they're not natural. Certainly Caracol wants nothing to do with them. 
or thinks of them as as in Caracol's view of the universe. They That's are. what it was. Oh, yeah. Okay. So as far as Tio is concerned, they're alien. Yeah, yeah, more than anybody in the group. I mean, I think Safira Sof probably feels that as well, but you you feel it pretty deeply that they're, because um, you had direct contact with one because your God's been kind of, you've been communing with your God about it. You definitely feel like they're not of the natural order around here. But I mean, you know, this world has magic in it, <laughs> so there's a lot of things that don't really fit. Um, but yeah, that's definitely a, a sense that you have. Okay, so what's what's next? Um, maybe uh, can we walk around the outside edge and just check out these altars and see if there's anything else that we can find out on them? Yeah, at this point, because of the angle of the light, you're going to need to light a torch. So go ahead and um, uh, I'll know if you want to lead that. If you want to lead that. Um, Action. Is everybody uh, good with that? Yeah, okay. So as the four, the four of you make your way along this walkway, which is largely intact and made up of these pa square paving stones with the kind of beveled corners, like um, all of the stonework in this area. Um, the pillars have a similar fixture as in the temple. Do you remember there were those, um, the crystal holders that were shaped kind of like, um, well, there were statues with their hands outstretched, but then there were um, these kind of, um, uh, basically it's, it's easy for you to conclude that these pillars once held crystals atop them. Um, it seems pretty clear that that's the case. And, um, each of the altars you investigate by torchlight and you know occasionally glancing into the crater to see those bugs you know pausing trying to figure out where Tio is and then moving in his direction um each of the altars uh bears the same um seven pointed star uh, and everything the pillars the altar the walkway the ground everything is covered with the strange inscription the strange labyrinthine script uh, and you make a full circuit of the of the walkway and then you come back to the um the point where the the walkway leads away and up um away from the walk from the from the crater up the slope towards the viewing platforms or those elevated platforms um back the way you originally entered And there's, I should say that the, at this point, um, I'm gonna go back to that for a second, the whiteboard. Um, can you guys see my pointer? Yeah. Okay. So you came in where the star was. I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna put another star where the, um, the little crawl space to the lichen chamber with the husks, that was here. Um, the whole area behind, the walkway, this part of the cavern back here, has largely been in darkness um, as the shaft of light moves through this, you know, across the room, this, this whole back part of the cavern has not been illuminated. So you don't actually know what things look like back there. Just to be clear about what you've explored and what you haven't. Hmm. Should we check it out? Tina, are you feeling like you want to get out or not so worried about the slow moving threat? Um, I'm not, I'm not worried. No, I'm not worried about the bugs. Um, I guess since we're here, we might as well continue. But let's not 
spend too much time. Does anyone have anything to write with? Looks like not. Yeah. Uh, I give her a knife. Um, I, I don't have any wood or anything. Oh, I thought you meant on the ground. No, I just mean to, to just to just write down what some some of this writing. I have oh. no idea how to decipher it here, but perhaps it would be of interest. Oh. Knowledge has value as well. Both. Brother Brother Brass has it. He's a little woo-woo now, right? Yes, um, he's still pretty out of it. But he was writing things on, uh, on a book. Yeah, he, um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to look up exactly what he had. Um, yeah, he's, you know, his gods, he serves Osabia the wise god of knowledge and luck. Um, so he was um, writing down things. He was recording things. So he does have writing implements. All right. Oh, oh. Certainly, depending on how long you're going to stick around, you could certainly borrow them from him and he wouldn't. It wouldn't bother him. That's all. What's that? That's all. That's all. Okay. Um, so investigate the far side of the crater right now. Is that right? Okay. Um, Torch in hand. Yep, Mama. Before we leave, I um, was remembering the uh, this the song that my mother taught me of the. Tatia, and it seems like an appropriate place to sing that song. Ooh. And not being a uh, priest or priestess or whatever, but you know, with all the folk wisdom and traditions and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I thought it might, uh, I don't know, give me some insight or luck or something. <laughs> I remember I remember before it's it said give thanks to the mother of stars all who enter so um so I sing this song there is a secret one inside all the stars and all the galaxies Run through her hands like beads. Run through her hands like beads. That was just a song that uh, her mother, Amu's mother, taught her. And they would sing at um, the, the, uh, the festival of Tatia. Great. Um do you, is it in Dwarven? Or in the common? Uh, I think that was a translation. Okay. And where do you, where are you standing when you sing it? Um, in front of the last altar that we ended up at. Okay. And sort of out into the... Into the, into the crater. Towards the crater. Okay. Um... Why don't you make a um, wisdom roll? It doesn't kill the, the bugs, does it? <laughs> just instantly. Be great. They just die. <laughs> um, uh, I rolled a six, and I have a minus one. So okay, okay. Um, I'm going to let you mark wisdom for that. I just raised up to nine. Nice. Now I have... A zero. Whoa. He's big, commuting. Wow. Commuting with the old big, dwarf gods. Um, got some insight. That's useful. I mean, some wisdom out of yeah. it. Um, okay. And then um, 
and I make a move and my move is off screen basically. So something just happened, but you guys don't know what it was. Uh, otherwise, you know, the, your voice kind of echoes into the crater and back and um, gets lost in the vast kind of um, cavernous um, space. And like while you're singing, um, perhaps some clouds pass in front of the sun. So the, the, um, the shaft of light kind of like um, goes in and out for a moment. Um, but it is getting pretty, uh, the light's getting pretty gray um, as it gets late in the day. And then you make your way into the darkness on the far side of the crater. Yeah. Torch in hand. Um, and are you uh, gonna, so that altar that you um, just sang at was right where this, uh, well, actually you started here, you went all the way around, it was here. So if you're basically at the kind of bottom end of the, the crater, would you guys proceed to the right and explore in this direction or to the left and explore in this direction? Anybody have a idea? I don't have a preference. Left. Left, okay. We got a direction. Okay. Um, mark a duration on the torch. Are these my torches? That, or is this the torch you still have from me? I assumed it was the one I still had. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right, so you spend a good half an hour investigating that um, um, the um, upper uh, edges of the cavern here, and it roughly is shaped like I've drawn it. Um, uh, really uneven, jagged uh, rock formations sticking out. Um, the floor is relatively level, but um, you know it goes up and down a little bit. You get all the way around to um, the far side of the crater, um, and you encounter a an area of the cavern wall, kind of right back sort of opposite the, the entry path against the opposite um, at the opposite end of the cavern um, where a number of small uh, tunnels which appear to be natural kind of cut into the rock uh, at different um, at different angles it's like half a dozen kind of openings um, you know one or two are sort of a little bit above ground level Several more are, are like 10 or 15 feet above ground level. Um, no apparent um, rhyme or reason to them. They have um, either like there's some kind of like uh, geological shift or, you know, some kind of softer rock that eroded over time, but, but there's a number of um, dark openings leading back into the rock of, of, different, of different sizes, like none of which a human could stand in. You'd, they'd have to be, um, you'd have to enter crawling. Anyone feel like investigating that? Or will you carry on? Walk through, walk in or dwarf? Would a dwarf be small enough to walk in or a halfling? Yeah, I think that they're the, um, one of them, that I think even a dwarf or halfling would have to like duck a little bit, but they could sort of almost stand up. And just peering in with the torch, you can see that inside the, you know, there are places where it gets bigger and smaller, you know, goes up higher. Um, I'd like to take a peek inside. Like go in a little um, bit? Yeah. Like to the full extent of, you know, just investigate until it seems like you might be going too far. Yeah, I just want to uh, crawl in a bit and see if anything shapes up if there's a, another cavern or if there's anything interesting in there Any okay crystals <laughs> for instance could there possibly be um 
so you kind of uh, choose an opening that seems like you could fit into, uh, uh, squeeze through into a, um, a pretty tight, through a pretty tight area, and then it opens up and extends like above your head at a weird angle, and then you have to climb up a kind of hard, jagged surface, um, and then you're faced with uh, several, t uh, several of these openings, these um, natural tunnels going off in sort of different directions. And holding your torch up and peering down them, um, there's nothing really that distinguishes one from the other. Uh, so to investigate much further past that point, um, you might run the risk of um, kind of getting lost. That's what would be at stake. Mm. Um, I kind of holler back that information. Are we close enough? Yeah, they can hear you for sure. Yeah. Tell them what I'm seeing. Uh, do you Does guys want to crawl in? Does the writing lead in? So Teo uh, is, in, is sort of investigates the um, the openings. It's a really good question. You see some sign of the writing, like one or two lines going in, but it's not covered the way that the rest of the place, the rest of the cavern is. Like at first, you think there's none. But then mm -hmm. on closer inspection, you see there's a couple spots where it looks like one of these creatures might have crawled in there at some point. Let's investigate. Yeah. I'll, I'll crawl in. Okay. Well, how about our human friends? <laughs> Are you guys going to hang around outside? You can fit in here. And, and Amu tells you that there are spaces where you could actually stand, but these things are, these, these tunnels are somewhat uneven and for humans, it's going to be a little less comfortable in there. Well, do you guys want to go a little farther or, um, I mean, I guess we can just come in. Is it a, is it a shrug your shoulders and okay. <laughs> Doesn't somebody have some chalk? I think, uh, Ozana gave us some chalk a while ago. Do we still have that? I guess Somebody, somebody's got to have it. I don't know if anybody has it written down, but um. yeah, I don't have it written. Um. Well, that's right, because you used it to get through those other tunnels, I think, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry, Safira, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll get it go in there until it's not really possible anymore if that's what we want to do okay um so who's leading the way here the dwarf yeah our usual underground marching order is claudio and tio in front Evaristo, Sophia in the middle and amu in the back but it looks like amu is going to lead um humans bring up the rear claudio you're down for this yeah, I, I can go last. Okay. You got your, your spear back. Tio managed to retrieve that, so you've got that. Now a spear in a in tight quarters like this, any kind of, I mean, it's gonna be hard to swing any kind of weapon in here, but a spear can be, might be useful in the sense that you can hold it in front of you, right? Or in whatever direction something might be coming at you. And a narrow tunnel, a spear in a narrow tunnel can be useful, you just can't really, it's hard to like turn around and manage it. Um, but probably more useful than like a sword or an ax because you can just point it at things. Um, okay. So with Amu in the lead, and I, okay, you've got chalk, but you used, you were using it before and it's not a lot. So I'm gonna say, we didn't talk about how many uses it was though. So Amu, I'm just gonna have you roll luck to see how much that chalk is left. Um, I rolled a six and I have a minus one to my luck right now. <laughs> okay, so you reach into your bag and you pull out and you've just got chalk dust on your hands. Um, there's, 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 there's no useful chalk remaining. Um, can I make a, a nice handprint with that chalk dust? 
Uh, you can make one or two um, marks with it. Yeah, you could you could definitely make a mark that you would recognize upon returning to this spot. If you like, if you want to put it in a particular spot where you know, if you do manage to get, if you get lost and end up back here, that would tell you the way to the exit for sure. Yeah. Okay. The way we came. Great. And then our, I'm sorry, are you leading the way or is Tio leading the way? Oh. Um, I didn't. I wasn't sure about the answer to that. You lead the way. I'll go. Okay. And how would you say you're trying to, with the absence of chalk, how would you say you're trying to navigate these um, these tunnels using logic and spatial reasoning, or relying on your instincts, or some other way? Um, well. Um, I think that um, probably instincts um, and uh, I guess I have a plus one to perceiving underground so that would be like an instinct kind of a thing. Yeah. And yeah. your wisdom just went up to nine, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you get, it's going to give you, you're going to get a plus one to this roll. Yeah. Yeah. All right, go for it. <laughs> With my plus one, I get a four. <laughs> okay, so you get to mark wisdom again. All right. Um, mark off your torch duration. Yeah. And you are lost. <laughs> you round a corner, turn around, everybody's... Um, basically been following you you've gone through a couple of turns and um um maybe it's because like you haven't done a lot of exploration of this kind of like weird crevicey kind of space but you have kind of lost your orientation or maybe there's something about this environment and um at the same time Safira starts to feel a little dizzy. And Claudio, you notice Safira kind of pause and reach out and kind of like steady herself on the on the cave wall. <laughs> oh, whoa, guys. Hang on a minute. How dizzy am I? Am I like room spinning or just kind of um, like there is a moment when yes uh everything kind of goes and um in fact you take a point of dexterity damage like your physical coordination is suddenly um compromised all right uh hang, hang on a second y'all <laughs> Drink some water. Okay, so you steady yourself. Amu, are you, uh, do you, do you let everybody know that you don't know where you are? <laughs> or do you carry it? You can certainly forge ahead and pretending you know what you're doing. Is there, um, is, is there any interesting features in this rock or anything noticeable? You have noticed that the, um, the, the surface, which was somewhat um, kind of regular in, color has become um, sort of striated and kind of gray and black. Um, uh, not so different from, if you recall, the, the shrine cave with the, wa the water that spilled into it. Um, and maybe occasionally elsewhere in this mountain you've encountered a similar thing, but the, the, the sort of um, the pattern of the stone has changed a little bit just because you're moving into a different, a different area, you, you presume. So like kind of horizontal banding, right? When you hold the torch and look at the walls, a kind of horizontal banding that as you've gone deeper, it seems to like narrow somewhat. There's something strange about these caves. I don't know if we should keep going or if we should try to get back. 
Am I still, am I still like loopy or do I like recover myself? Um, you, um, are not fully recovered, but, um, drink, taking water and taking, um, a breath or two steadies you and is, um, so at this moment you feel a little bit better, but you definitely, you know, you give a couple of test turns of your head and things don't feel quite right. Okay. Guys, I think we should go back. I'm like, I think I'm too tired for this. I'm kind of. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Let's, let's, let's head back. So Amu, you're not letting on that you might not know what's up. You're just gonna you're gonna try to um, fake it till you make it. <laughs> no, uh, there's something odd about this cave. I can't quite recall if we should go this way or that way. Does anybody else remember something about these striations that are confusing me? I will give Claudio a shot at remembering. Claudio's bringing up the rear and Claudio is the smartest of the bunch. Okay. Right, Claudio's uh, 13 intelligence, which is the best you guys have. So Claudio can try to remember which, which fork you guys took at the last juncture. And that's a um, plus one. Yeah. Six? Yeah. Um, you could spend a point of luck to push it to a seven if you wanted. I do. I will spend a luck. So okay. I'm down to five luck. Oh, five luck. Wow. Um, so you're like, uh, I think it was this way. <laughs> Not entirely sure. But yeah, and you lead everybody down one of these um, passages, um, you know, duck under like a sharp um, ceiling. Um, and then, um, then you feel like it was the right way. And um, at first that choice seemed a little random to you, but then you feel a little reassured uh, when you notice um, uh, Tio's footprint in the dust on one of the rocks. So you've been this way before. And um, in, you know, in another five or 10 minutes, you're back at the handprint and you can find your way out. And by this time, everybody's feeling a little dizzy and everybody takes a point of dexterity damage. So, except Sephira does not take additional damage. And from the handprint, are you gonna get out of these tunnels? Yeah. Okay. So you emerge back into the cavern. Um, the light is just a sliver now coming in that crack in the ceiling, angled down at a really sharp angle. Um, so you'll need the torch to get back out. Mark another duration on that. Um, so this torch is done. Okay. How many more do you have? I have one torch. Nobody else? <laughs> those, those, uh, those crystals glow, don't they? They do, they glow. Um, do you have any with you or did everybody leave their backpack full of crystals back in the base camp? Um, I brought mine along. You did? Yeah. Yeah, so your backpack's been emitting a sort of faint light they glow you know it's like i think all of, you know if you pull one out of your backpack it would be like a faint candle so it wouldn't really it would you could find your way home with it for sure but it would take a while yeah um i thought we had more torches if maybe ozana has some um perhaps we should <laughs> light that one and get out of here yeah. <laughs> so light the torch. Um, Sophie, why don't you track that? Um, uh, yeah. And you just uh, hightail it 
back to the mouth. Um, if you're somewhat familiar with this cavern, there's still some light, you know where the crater is. It's pretty easy to navigate back to the, to the um, walkway, um, proceed up the steps and then make your way back. And you don't encounter, I think, you know, when you glance, glance into the crater and hold the torch out, the torch, the torch doesn't light enough of it to tell where those creatures are. And there may be a little anxiety about the fact that you're moving through a dark space and those things are out there somewhere, but you don't encounter them. Um, and just mark one duration off that torch um, in order to get you guys back to base camp. Um, Azana and Evaristo, uh, uh, have, you know, we're a little bit worried, but it's not totally dark out yet. So you, you know, they were a little anxious, but um, happy to see you back, and they want to know everything that um, happened. Uh, so you guys, you, can, you know, relate whatever you want to relate. Um, and Ozana tells you that while you were gone, um, the what appears to be the the kind of uh the bull of this herd of cattle has showed up and has kind of ushered the cattle away from the cave mouth and back down towards the river at the foot of the mountain so the cattle are no longer hanging around the cave mouth they've been um and she tells you that they're still down there and you can um in the dusk light you can see them um you know sort of doing what little grazing they can by the by the water side and, and drinking from the river. But um, they've been kind of herded away from from you. Um, we need to take this bull with us. Uh, uh, back to Zika. So that we can have uh, so we can have more baby Valuisas. Claudia, what, what do you think about um, this proposal? It's, it's, your, it's your sister he's talking about. I think that she won't understand it, but maybe it's worth a try. She'll see the good intention behind it, perhaps. So there's going to be a cattle drive. <laughs> we have one piece of rope. Can anyone, uh, anyone have any roping skills? You mean like lasso? <laughs> I think um, if we can uh, tempt them with some kind of food, they maybe will follow us and um, yeah, that's how you got them before it was when you um that's how we got them before yeah what about you want to go ahead go ahead. Oh. Oh, no, I was going to say, do you, uh, Amu, do you want to um, try to feel out the temperament of the bull? Oh, yeah. Um, bulls are tricky, but uh, you can win them over, too. With, with enough bread? So are you going to try to do this before um, sundown? Mm, I don't think so. Wait until the next day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then it's time to make camp unless there's any other actions people wanted to do before that happens. I think we all need to recover a little bit. Yeah, good idea. Okay, here we go. 
everyone must consume one ration. You've got eight total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That takes you down to one ration, unless anybody, somebody wants to go without. <laughs> right, because you got to eat if you want to recover. So everybody's going to eat? Yeah. And are you tracking rations there, Jan? I am. Okay, so we're down to yeah, one down. as a group. Rations. I saw it written down somewhere. Oh, yeah, there. One. And then, let's see here. Oh, careless. So now um, you guys are settling into sleep. And I'm going to have uh, Claudio roll. Um, this is plus safety, which is not about, it's not a character stat. It's um, the safety of the area that you're staying. And the safety, this uh, area is considered dangerous. So there's no modifier. So just roll 2d6. Okay. Wait, I'm going to change my dice. Um, you could spend a luck to bump that up to a seven. Um, this is public knowledge. A six or less, um, a creature finds your camp, and that creature, don't know if it's going to be beneficial or harmful, no idea. Um, it's, it's a random creature based on the area you guys are staying. If you bump it up to a seven, a mishap occurs in the night. But you're pretty low on luck, right? <coughs> Although for this, actually for this roll, anybody could spend luck. Claudio made the roll, but it's a roll for the whole party. Also not necessary. You could just see what happens with the creature. Uh, I'm happy to spend it, unless anyone else wants to drop. I don't think you should get your luck that low. To four? <laughs> yeah. You only get one back every time you level up. You're going to be miserable oh. level up. It's true, um, but I'm already down to minus two, so... Well, but if you... Don't spend it when you level up, then you'll get back up to six. True. Um, and this creature we... might be friendly. Yeah, let's we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's just a random. Or it might be food. It might be food. Yeah, it could be, could be potentially <laughs> food. I mean, you have a herd of cattle at your front door. You want food, but they're filled with crystals. Um, okay. You're gonna let it, let it, let it ride. Yeah, I'll take the advice of my friend. <laughs> um, okay, roll 1d6 then. Shoot. Two. 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 Three. Okay. So you guys are, um, um, let's see, and you do have the lowest luck in the party at this point, Claudio. So your luck is, yeah, but yeah, you do. Um, you are on watch. So everybody's sort of asleep in the main cave and you're on watch. And, um, you know, I think you're, you're sort of mainly stationed at the cave mouth looking down. It's a clear night. The stars are super clear. Um, And what you notice is, so everybody got this crystals kind of s stuffed in their backpacks. Maybe there's one or two kind of lying on the ground inside the cave. And they all have this faint, that faint glow about them, um, which is like I said, equivalent to like a, a candle. And one thing you notice as it gets darker in that sort of deep of night, um, you notice that the cattle, the crystals that they have, if you guys remember, they have these crystals kind of growing out of there hides that appear to be embedded in their bodies somehow those crystals are growing glowing much brighter than yours um not not brighter than they have before but you just notice there's a difference in the brightness um uh and you recall that when you saw the cattle last evening they had the same degree of intensity so that's one thing you notice um but then you hear a like a um, a sound of one of these things in pain coming from um, 
down the hillside and to the right, which is upstream. So looking down from where you guys are, uh, it's a rocky slope descending towards the river and the waterfall. If you just picture that kind of pouring over a cliff to the, cliff to the left and to the right, there's kind of um, scrubby trees and um, some kind of, uh, some copses of fir trees extending along the right side along the banks of the river. So somewhere in that direction, which is very dark right now, there's only starlight, um, you hear the sound of one of these animals in, in pain. What do you do? So is everyone else asleep? Yeah. Well, I sense that there's something wrong and probably should alert the group. Do you wake them up quietly or? Yeah, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, quietly. So everybody is kind of roused from their sleep. Um, they come blinking to their feet and um, grab whatever's at the ready and uh, what do you tell them? I heard a sound upstream. Uh, sounds like one of those crystal creature cows is hurt. I wonder if there's something out there that Hunts them, hurts them. You guys peer out of the cave mouth. Um, you see the kind of well. What you can really see is, of course, the glowing crystals. So you see these little um, um, glowing points down by the water side, moving, um, shifting sort of shadows and dark shapes. And um, there's definitely uh, increased movement and a feeling like there's some uh, the, the the animals are acting sort of anxiously, and you hear like a. <laughs> aren't like sounds of um, uh, you know they not um, perhaps fright there, there's there's something happening amongst the herd there do you hear that oh My you should head into the flock. I uh, don't want to lose all of our cows. And as you're watching, they appear to be, as a group, starting to um, sort of move down towards the, the waterfall side. Um. So away from the sound? That's right, yeah. From the direction you heard the sound coming from. We gotta help. I asked Ozana if she has a torch. <laughs> <laughs> Everisto, go help. We're out of torches, Everisto. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ozana. Yeah, she had. Yeah, she had some, I think, so, Sophie, do you remember if you, do you guys remember who started out with torches in your group? Who actually bought some before you guys went I, I think that I brought torches. Okay. I did not have adventure oh. here, but I think I brought, bought torches. Okay. okay. Did anybody else? Uh, they're erased off my sheet. Okay. As well, but. They're erased off your sheet. Yeah, oh, I definitely don't have any left. You don't have any left, okay. Yeah. And Amo, did you have any torches that you brought with you? I only brought a tinder box. Okay. Um, so why don't you roll, uh, let's see, an Amo, roll a d6 to see how many torches Amu has. I mean, sorry, Ozana. 
five. Yeah, so she's got a she's got a bundle. Um, yep. She opens up her pack uh, and turns out they're all they're all kind of wound together. Yeah. Them to you. Um, let's. Uh, I, I I light a couple of torches. And. Um, uh, Who's coming, I say, as I head out with a lit torch. Okay, so Tio, Tio raised a hand, so Tio's oh, following. Um, I, have a, I have a relationship with the <laughs> cow. Um, and I look over to Claudio and I hold out a torch. Uh... Do you have cow trauma from your childhood? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, yeah, I can, oh, I'm with you. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, so I hand the other to Claudio. And mm. I guess I want to head off kind of halfway between the direction of the sound that i heard and where the where the where the um cow seemed to be going okay so aim for sort of midway there yeah okay um ozana is also joining you guys um so um she draws her um her two blades and um is going to uh exchanges a glance with safira of uh you know i'm with you and uh because you guys have a bond right of some kind and um amu leads the way torch aloft uh down the hillside sort of skirting the trees on the right um it's a little um rocky and some loose stones but not like really difficult um descent uh and in what it, but obviously you got a torch so you're not trying to be stealthy um are you proceeding cautiously or, or quickly? Like, are you concerned that there's some, something that you need to deal with right away or are you being kind of cautious? Um, well, I realize the torchlight doesn't go very far and mostly. Um, uh, listening to hear if I can hear movement of anything in the darkness that doesn't have glowing lights attached to it. <laughs> um, well, it's kind of with everybody coming coming down the hillside. Yeah. Are you gonna like signal for everybody to stop and then kind of listen quietly? Yeah, for a minute. When we get down close enough, I want to see if I can hear anything again. Every every once in a while, if I can hear anything besides the cows. Yeah. Okay. So, trying to isolate those the kind of lowing, they're kind of panic lowing off to the left. Um, you you signal for everybody to pause for a moment and. Um, you hear a kind of um, <laughs> um, definitely a sound of distress from one of them further up to the further upstream. Uh, uh, let's head in that direction. Okay, and everybody kind of following single file behind Amu. So, that's, so there's one, two, three, four, five of you, including Ozana. Um, uh, Jan, will you roll a d12 for me? Four. Okay. Hmm. Um, you reach the, um, the banks of the river uh uh which are rocky it's a pretty fast flowing river here this close to the waterfall um and uh, you heard the sound over even over the sound of the rushing water and um holding the torch and picking your way through the stones um upstream uh, the shadows of the trees are you know the trees are casting these dramatic shadows as um both of the torches are moving across the, the landscape um and then you make out the shape of one of the, well, at first you see the glowing crystals of one of the, um, 
animals uh, down, lying down um, at the riverside. You know, so right, so the, you know, the torch has about a 30 foot radius. So um, you get to a point where the, you, see the, you see the glowing lights first in the darkness and you get close enough where you see that the, the body is um, there by the side of the river. And one of its, um, if you remember, they have these dual trunks. Um, one of them is, one of its trunks is kind of like weakly kind of gesturing in the air. Let's all stop and listen. I kind of hold my hand up like this. Is there uh, any other sounds <laughs> happen? Um, let's see, who's got the highest? Uh, that's a T.O. That's a T.O. roll. T.O. Um, you've got the highest wisdom of everybody here, so you're better at perceiving things. OK. Uh, seven. Okay. Uh, you can ask a question about the object of your attention, which is you're just listening around. You just are you just is there, the question could just be do I hear anything unusual or is yeah, anything, do I hear another a different sound? A, an, another animal, yeah. Okay, so you kind of tune in. Um, there's the rushing of the water. Um, in, there's the occasional sound of this injured one. There's the faint sounds of those down there. Um, and uphill from you, if you picture you guys lined up sort of all on the, um, the shore of this river, with the animal, the river's on your left as you look upstream, animals ahead of you. To the right of you going up the slope towards the mountain is mixed fir trees and undergrowth. To the right and ahead, you hear um, something go. Like a, like a, um, possibly a voice. A voice? Possibly. If it is a voice, it's not a human voice. Oh, okay. Um... It's a bug voice. A bug voice? They've come for us. Uh, so, okay, so <laughs> I'll, um, I don't know who I'm standing next to, but I'll, um, I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. I'll like tap and point in the direction of like, you know, let people know like, hey, I heard it. It's okay. over there. Yeah, so you were second out the door. I think Safir is right behind you and Amu's in front of you. Okay, so yeah, I'll, t I'll tap Amu and point. Yeah, okay. And everybody else sees that because you guys are in the torchlight. So you guys all see Tio gesture up towards the woods. And then I... <laughs> are you heading up that way? Or are you... I think he was just in... For are you? Are you going for it? I mean... And then you slip out of the torchlight? No, I mean, no, 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 like, no, no, no. <laughs> are, you, are you doing this and then like go, you know, starting to walk? Yeah, like, like let's, let's. Like, go, go, go. Like let's all go at least like be in between the, um, our cow friend and the noise. Okay, I will follow. I'm following. Or. This is maybe like too out of the game, but if if this thing attacked uh, a cat, uh, one of these creatures, and then isn't like left it alive and isn't eating it or right next to it, like yeah. is is this a trap? That's totally not out of the game because Tio is like totally savvy about that kind of thing, right? Like, okay. I mean, maybe not the trap part, but you right. find it, if this was like a kind of predator, depending on the size of it, and you know, it might either run away as soon as it heard you, or it might hang out and continue eating and ignore you, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. Could, yeah. Certainly you can put the consideration that it might be a trap on the table. 
but you're gesturing for everybody to sort of come with you up in that direction to protect the hurt oh animal. okay so you're not going towards this new sound you're going towards the animal or uh, my thought was like in between the two okay like oh i see to like put yourselves between them and the threat yes the perceived threat okay yeah everybody following tia's lead on that okay um yep i'm wondering if one of us i kind of whisper one of us should sneak outside of the light to Ozana um Ozana um, gives you a quick nod and then um slips away okay and sh one thing you know about elves is that they can be very very quiet yeah so yeah, let's go. Okay, so you guys move. Let's <laughs> uh, so have Claudio, you roll 2d6 with plus nothing. Are you rolling your special new dice? Uh, yeah, I think it's also, it's the box. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, seven. Seven? Yes. Okay. Okay, so you guys move up. Uh, as you get sort of um, closer to um, the spot where the animal is, but uphill of it, Tio, you're a little bit ahead of everybody because you started this movement. Um, you hear uh, definite, like, there's like a, you know, um, a branch snaps, um, there's the sound of something crunching up the hill and you hear <laughs> um, and movement. And then you uh, sort of arrive at the position that you were headed towards and pause and everybody's listening. Um, and then you hear that a, a, a couple more sounds kind of further away. And it looks, it sounds to you like whatever had made those sounds has um, retreated. in response to your advance. Okay. Is, is that a noise that I have heard before? Hmm. Why don't you roll, um, roll, that's a luck roll, I think. Well, actually, <laughs> no, it could be a know something roll. Let's make it a know something roll. Um, that's intelligence. That's intelligence? Yeah. Uh, seven. Hmm. If if anything, if it reminds you of anything, it's the language of the hill folk that live um, near, you know, the um, the wetland that you're used to kind of mm -hmm. um, hanging around in. Uh, it, it possibly could be related to that, but nothing definitive. Did not sound human, but did sound like language. Interesting. Okay. I'll, I'll relay that and then um, maybe go check on this. Uh, so it, it, you're saying that they left? Uh, they've at least retreated further to a safer distance, let's call it. Okay. Um, they've at least retreated away. It's possible that they've left entirely, but they've gotten further out of your shot. Um, then, I, then I'll go look and see if there's maybe like an arrow or something. Yeah. Um, with this. The animal has been, uh, it's uh, upper chest has been deeply pierced by some sort of piercing weapon and it's bleeding out on the banks of the river, but there's no arrow in sight. It was a bigger, you know, you might presume a spear or something like that. Oh, um, is that something I could heal, or? Oh, with your uh, lay on hands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You could, you could possibly. I mean, it, you know, I think it would take a fair amount to save this creature's life at this point. 
um, it's certainly possible when where there's caracol there's a way yeah I'll try it um, let's see so what's your current favor three so after you make this roll to make this roll to lay on hands you have to burn a constitution and then you roll wisdom or charisma and at a 10 plus they would heal hit points equal to double your current favor I think that if you got a 10 plus, you could save this animal's life. Okay. Um, and then can I add a luck to it? Yep. Or does it, do I add favor? Uh, you can't use, let's, let's see, what, how do you, can you use favor? Whenever you make a move that falls within the domain of your deity, you can spend favor. Okay. Um, so if you could somehow f- think about how this falls within the realm of Caracol, this act. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I think that uh, because, because I think these are, are people, mm-hmm. um, that have hunted this thing and not another animal, mm-hmm. then I think, I've, I feel like it's, uh, it's better to try and s- preserve the life than it is to like, let it be a part of nature. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 sure. Okay, yeah, I'll buy that. So favor you spend before the roll, luck you spend after the roll. I will spend a favor. One point of favor, okay. Yep. Uh, I rolled a five. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so Mark, um, wisdom. Okay. And yeah, you can't save this thing. Unless, I mean, if you could try. But um, yeah, you're not going to be able to see it. Uh, I've got some bandages. <laughs> this, is <definitely, laughs> this is definitely God territory. Um, I can try. Um, What's your current favor? Two. Yeah, so if you, the only way you can do it is if you don't spend any favor. You have to have enough favor in the bank in order to, um, I mean, in this case, I'm saying basically you need to be able to heal four points, um, which is what Tio was going to do because Tio spent a favor and had two left as well. So you need to roll a 10 or higher. Straight up. Uh, it's based on your wisdom or charisma, whichever is better. Right. Yeah, my charisma is good. Oh, you're even ten. Sorry. And you have to burn a point of constitution. I should mention that. I'm currently minus one constitution. How quickly do I heal ability scores? Every night. Um, what's your, yeah? So every night you get one hit point and or ability point back. Once you guys get back to town can do some serious healing but yeah it's only one point a day basically Woof. i have a minus two and if i have a minus two constitution <laughs> what happens i just well you, you may recall that i've asked you to roll constitution for things like climbing a long dwarven staircase or <laughs> um um oh by the way sorry once you guys got out of the those strange twisty tunnels and got back to the cave mouth and breathed some clean oxygen, you all restored that point of dexterity you lost. So for that, that actually was a very temporary effect. So that's not a permanent loss. Um, Yeah, so constitution, especially in kind of wilderness travel can be, you know, it's how you like resist disease and how you, you know, let's say you went with a day without eating before you you being hungry, you might might get a constitution check. So um, it is a tough one to kind of allow to go too far. I guess the question is, how valuable is this um, strange animal's life? Well, I do think that if 
I don't know how intelligent these creatures are and how much they will remember, but you know, if we perform this, this miracle in front of them, maybe they will be our homies. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Sophia doesn't know what constitution is. <laughs> She's kind of like, am I getting sick? I don't know. I feel kind of bad. <laughs> Maybe it was those mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a minute since the lichen. Yeah. She's really missing that, actually. I could use a little easy, get in touch with Caracol the easy way. Um, all right. Well, here we go. So... Yeah, so you burn a point in Constitution, and then you roll, in your case... Oh, yeah, you got charisma. That's right. Um, you get a plus one for that. Um, all right. Here we go. I rolled a nine plus one is ten. No. Wow. So Tio steps back, hands bloody, and kind of shakes his head, and then Safira comes in and what does it look like when you um lay hands on this uh pretty it's a pretty massive animal actually and it's been it's been the spear or whatever pierced it like right in the breast yeah well uh yeah i think i i put my hand in its blood and i do create a spiral around the wound like well, I, the spear has been removed at this point. It's, the spear is nowhere to be seen, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I create a spiral around the... And then I put my hand over the wound. With, like, the other hand or the same hand? You do this and then... Put I it. do, like, a spiral, like, quickly, and then, like, a... <laughs> like a... Wow. Like a stop. Like okay. And then there's a little... <laughs> kind of, like... Um, it kind of jolts a little bit and um, uh, uh, sort of pulls itself up into kind of like a, um, you know, it's lying down still, but it's pulled its head up. Um, and it's two, um, the two trunks kind of come out and um, touch you. And one of them kind of like crawls up your body and um, uh, touches your neck. And you're sort of so you're sort of sitting there with your hands on it, and there's a moment where the the two of you are are, are sort of like not quite embracing, but definitely like connected. Um, and I feel like crap. <laughs> you feel, you feel ah, this is so nice, but I feel kind of garbage. <laughs> I'm just like whoa. Okay. <laughs> at the edge of the um, at the edge of the torchlight. Um, you notice that some some other members of the herd have kind of shuffled up in the darkness and are now kind of standing in a kind of semicircle at a distance, um, observing what's happening. I do feel a little bad that we're probably stealing the food source of the indigenous creatures of this area. <laughs> if this if you pull off this cattle drive anyway, yeah, you, yeah right, yeah, you're messing with the with the ecosystem here. I'm sure there's more around. <laughs> Just like the buffalo, there's always more. Um, sorry, that was a down note. <laughs> um, all right, let's call it there with the saving of the life of this um, crystal bovine and wrap up. I'll find my, here we go, okay. Nice, very nice. Ooh, is it in color now? Sorry, let me zoom in on that. Ooh, yes, yes. That's what they look like. That's so great. Oh my god. Yeah, I got these nice I got these nice pencils. Beautiful. Will you please scan that and send it to me? Sure. So that I can <laughs> always have a record. Um Okay. Uh, did anybody fulfill an alignment goal? No, or he's like, no, nothing. Uh, how about um, Amu? 
Uh, did you fulfill at least one trait in a memorable way? Um, I don't, I mean, I was maybe a little bit impatient either, not really, I mean, diving down into that crater or going into those tunnels, but not necessarily so. Okay, that's, yeah, you can make that call. Um, Theo, did you do any lying? <laughs> um, I said, I, I mean, I guess I didn't really mess with the, uh, the, the bugs. When I said I was, I, I, I said I wasn't going to mess with the bugs. Oh, oh, and then you did. And then I jumped in the, the crater. I don't know if that counts. Oh, right. You said you're going to keep your distance. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. That doesn't feel like an a overt lie. That feels like an impulsive decision. Yeah. <laughs> What's your other trait? Idealism. Huh. I think the way you described that laying on hands was idealistic in the, in the Caracolian terms. So, yeah. Take a point. I'll take that. it. I'll take it. Claudio? Uh, what do you got? Fair I, and aggressive. Yeah, I don't think I was either very successful. You took that spear, though. I did. I think that aggressive in that context would have been over there on that pill bug, you know, before Safira had to ask for help, maybe. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. And I'm like, totally around. missing them. <laughs> um and Safira, you have I was compassionate. Oh, uh, with the animal? Uh-huh. Yeah. And cruel and decadent, but none of that's going on. I got rid of uh cruel, it's envious now. Oh nice. Oh that's right. You've done that before. Great. So take a point for um being compassionate. Uh, if you're a cleric, mark XP if you fulfilled the tenet, or in, um, I sort of rewritten that to be um, if you acted on a, a belief of your god. Um, trying to make it a little more general and easier to hit. So I think. You know, when you were in the crater with those things, you were, I guess you didn't know what the, in that context, you couldn't have contact with Caracol, so that didn't really work out. Um, so can any of you clerics think of a way that you might have done that? I feel like I need to rewrite the... The trigger? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, at this point, you could sort of, if you do something that feels like you're acting in the name of Caracol in some form um, that makes sense, um, then you could then you could get that one. Yeah, I feel like maybe Caracol is fine with death and you know, <laughs> that wasn't like the most Caracolian thing to do. Okay, got it. I like that. Um, okay, fighters, uh, did you solve a problem with physical force? Uh, you hacked your way up the side of a creature. Up the side. Yeah. Yeah. So you get a point for that. Um, Claudio, the, I, guess, I guess throwing that spear didn't really solve the problem. It didn't, but um, it was a good... It was a good effort. Uh, and then for the whole gang, did you make an exciting discovery? I mean, anybody have any suggestions? I feel like although we had discovered the crater previously, we kind of learned about it. I don't know if that... I think that the combo of that that it's the um you know the seven stars of tatia the song which sort of added to that drama and then combined with that feeling of i think tio discovered that these things were kind of 
tracking him. I don't know if I'd call that exciting in the sense of like, <laughs> yay, but like, uh, um, I mean, I think you discovered something about them. So let's, let's, everybody gets a point for that. Uh, did you overcome a difficult, difficult obstacle? Yes, you guys were trapped in this crater and you got out of it. And um, everybody gets a point for that. And did you acquire some memorable booty? Nope. <laughs> right, nothing new was acquired. A blunt axe. Right, that's a blunted axe. Uh, and then if you wanted to, um, you could modify your traits. Um, if you're not, you know, if you find yourself not acting on a trait in a way that you want to, you can, um, and there's steps in the rules. I'm not going to take you through right now, but there's steps in the rules there if you, if you wanted to shift your traits further. You could do that. Okay. Anybody close to, what are, where are we getting near level three? I have nowhere near. I just reached level three. You did? Oh, wait, I guess, yeah, nowhere near level four. Sorry. Nowhere near level four. Yeah, everybody else is already level three, right? Oh, okay. Which is, so everybody chose a new ability? Uh, no. I knew no. I had a question at the beginning <laughs> that I couldn't think of. <laughs> Yeah, I guess last time we just did that and we didn't do the level up stuff. Yes, so you when you reached level three, everybody got their hit points for level two, right? Yes. And your ability, yeah, we went through that whole process. So when you hit level three, you get to pick a new advanced move from the inside of your playbook. Everything listed on the right-hand side is an advanced move. Um, optionally, fighters could choose an um, additional favored weapon instead of an advanced move. So. Um, just as an example, if Amu wanted to also take Hatchet as a favorite weapon, um, Amu could do that. Um, clerics don't have, yeah, for clerics it's just the advanced move. And then of course your favor is based on, every time you level up, your favor and metal each as well. So you guys can think about that between now and next time. I, I tried to draw Saphira in the like old D and D way. Oh yeah, do you got you got a fixer? Oh, 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 oh yes! Oh my god, yeah. Wait, can you click on her with the spiral? Oh, she's clicked. Oh, sorry. How come I'm seeing it, but you guys aren't? That's weird. I'm getting her full. Nobody, huh? There you go. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. That's great. I have to put you to work, Sophie. <laughs> Got some drawings I need done.